join me here today at Tunnel Barn Farm where I spend, in the winter, I spend a lot of my time fishing here with different things like winter leagues and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be a good idea to bring the cameras here today to show you through how I fish venues like Tunnel in the winter and what methods and what parts of peg at different times and things like that. So first and foremost, we're going to start by dobbing bread. It's a method that this time of year, it's absolutely brilliant. It catches loads of fish up and down the country. And I'm just going to show you how I go about it. So first of all, the rigs, the top kit itself is a stubby kit from Frenzy. It's a short number one section, which is in a nice light gray, which doesn't give any silhouettes over the water, which is brilliant. also good in summer fishing, when you're shallow fishing, things like that. It doesn't spook the fish over the pole. The on to the main line. First actually we go to the elastic which is the dark green which is brilliant for this time of year. Also use it in the summer for fishing for eye and things like that. So the main line itself is 016 loaded mono to a six inch hook length of 010 the same material. The float is a 0.1 FP800 which is in the new colours from Frenzy which is a gunmetal grey and a nice matte finish as well so it doesn't capture the surface tension which some of those shiny glossy floats can. Nice bright bristle just so you can see it because the light can be quite bad this time of year. So on to the shot in. Shot in itself I've got a small little bulk underneath the float which just helps the float sit and then two droppers below it. The little guide I go is every foot of water you have a dropper. So for, for instance we're fishing in two, two foot of water over there today so then we've got two droppers. The hook length, like I said, is six inches. I think it's really important because it gives you that extra nice gradual fall and really natural look into the fish. The hook is an 0814 in a size, in a size 18, which to me is a brilliant hook for all round fishing, um, even more so for bread. So the, the bread itself can't beat Warburton's Toasty Loaf. Brilliant, use nothing else. So from that, we're going to go and have a and get fishing. Right, so let's go and have a look and see if we can catch a fish. So we're going to go in with a six mil punch of bread, which I think is the right sort of size to start on. Some days you want a smaller one, but for, predominantly for F1 fishing at venues like Tunnel, six mil's perfect. Just a nice little disc. Just one little thing, make sure it sinks. The last thing you want is to be shipping all that way over there to find out that your bread's actually floating. So let's just ship out now. Hopefully the wind will be nice and kind. And let us put our rig in properly. So what we'll do, we'll just start. Because there's not a great deal of cover on this bank, other than the little tree to my right, I'm going to start just a little bit away off it. Because the last thing you want to do is go straight in on where you think the fish are and you catch a couple and they spook and then they tend to, if there's no more cover, they'll tend to just, just swim away or they go out of your peg. That's the last thing you want. So what we'll do is we'll lift the rig out, drop it back in. One thing to mention is about with those light droppers, it makes the, makes the bread fall really, really natural which I think is really important because the last thing we do is just bomb, just bomb the bed, bread straight through all the fish and you don't tend to get, get many bites. The bite time normally is, oh, that's encouraging, bite straight away. Um, as I was saying, you tend to get your bites as the bread is just settling. You know, cut on this little wind's making it nasty. Making it a little bit awkward. Hopefully it'll be all right. I don't tend to leave my rig in the water still for much more than 10, 15 seconds because I just don't think it makes the bread look natural to the fish. Just lift it out, drop it back in, maybe six inches or something like that. Depth wise, there's probably nearly three foot of water, well not quite three foot, two and a half foot of water. Let's just hold on to the wind. Ooh. Um, what I found is the best depth to start dobbing at is just six inches off the bottom. Ooh. 
is six inches off the bottom, which just over experience has been, I found, the best depth. Some days you can catch it shallower, some days you've got to be near enough on the bottom. But hopefully this wind won't affect us too bad. As you notice there, I've got quite a long lash, which even though I'm fishing with that the light grey kit, it just gives you that little bit of extra insurance of not spooking too many fish. The only thing is that wind is horrible. Let me just pull the bread off so we just come and change. Just change it. Oh the bread is still on. Not in one piece though. Get rid of that. Try again, put another piece. Six mil again. Push it on. Hook it through there. It's ever so cold today. Hardly feel my fingers. Let's go. Let's try again. Again, making sure it sinks. It's the only downside with this wind is it you do tend to miss a, a few bites. Because it just makes it that bit awkward. What we'll do now is we'll move along the bank a little bit because it can be some days you can be literally putting your rig in one spot and move it a foot, not, sometimes not even a foot, and you can, you can be that far away from a ball of fish. But just by moving a lot, moving along the features on the far bank is really important. I think then. So a really slow fall. Again, there's different ways of putting your rig in as well. Some days you need to just really, really quietly put your rig in, lower it in really slow. Other days, drop it in from a little bit of a height just to make a little bit of a noise. There we go. Straight away. That'll do nice. As you see there. Oop, a bit of a swimmer. That elastic working lovely there. Another thing, another good thing about having a short top kit is that you get away with less elastic, which allows you to sometimes not use a puller kit, just which can aid you in just speeding up catching fish. With this light elastic, we'll just put one little pull. Normally they pop up there. Ooh, lovely F1. Swimmer. They come up there. Lovely. It's a great start. And as you can see, fish like that soon boost your weight. Let's try and get another one. So we go straight back in the same place now. Because usually once you found them, you just gotta try and keep track of where they go. And then it's just a case of repeating the process of catch a fish. And go in and just because dobbing in the winter can be brilliant because some people another way of starting actually is by fishing short and this is where dobbing again has an advantage of you're not actually feeding anything whereas by starting feeding sometimes you can have a detrimental effect to your peg because you've actually put bait in and sometimes the fish don't actually want to feed in the early part of the match and you can be waiting there for ages and ages and ages before you get a bite. But by dobbing, you're not putting any feed in, you're not doing any harm to your peck. And what you're also doing is you're giving yourself a mental image of where the fish are in terms of where they are in the peg. For, for example, because now I know I've, I've just caught a fish in that depth of water, I'm pretty confident that if I was to go out later on in the middle of the match, go out and fish in the shallow water with pellets, I sh quite confident I'd catch a few fish. Oh, that didn't look good though. Let's just drop that. Not that bad. Lift that up and drop it back in again. Try not to drop your pole in the water though. That's the problem with the wind. Just lift it there. 
slowly work, work your way closer to the overhanging bushes and things like that. Little, little features that are likely to hold fish. But as I say, you just put your keep repeat the process of put your rig in 10 15 seconds, lift it, drag it across, drop it. Just little ways of moving your rig around, just trying to induce a bite. And then lift it again. Drop it back in. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Just a bite there. Like I say, six inches tends to be the best best depth to start on. Some days you can catch a lot shallower. There's some days I've caught ten inches deep before now. the duck out the way. Hopefully it doesn't make too much disturbance. Just lift and drop it in. And those nice light droppers will pull the bread through nice and slow. Hopefully catching the attention of any fish in the area. This wind is horrible. Hmm. Try again. Very encouraging that we are getting bites, but it'd be a lot better if we actually put them on the yolk. Swing the rig in, a little bit of a noise. There we go. Take your time. Fish every fish in the winter counts. Keep your pole nice and low. Guide the fish away from any overhanging trees or again, just take your time. That short top kit doing all the work again, bringing the fish up nice and close. That's a lovely F1. That'll do. Brilliant. There, the stamp you want. Hook just in the top of the mouth. Lovely fish. Let's try it. Get another one. And like I said, just keep repeat the process now. Try and get into a bit of a rhythm. And go through with shit, that was 
Question mark. And we'll do the same as we did because last time lifting it and dropping it made it got induced a quick bite. Drop from a height. Just little things like that, making just a tiny bit of noise. There can be a difference between getting a bite and not. Just try and get one more. Ooh. There's definitely a few fish there now. In a match, I'd be very happy with this the way this is going. That wind is just making it a little bit awkward, dragging the float a little bit as well. Swing it in there. And there we go, same place again. It's just a case now of hopefully, now you've found a fish, just keep going in and making the most of it. Some days you can go in, you can catch down one in one spot all day, very rarely, but um, this is the beginning of a match now. Be very happy. Three early fish like this. Brilliant. Probably before anyone else has even had a bite. Just take your time. Just taking your time. No need to rush it. Could be a small carp. Surprising how how strong O10 really is. There we go, also a lovely, lovely big F1. Beautiful. Brilliant. That's awesome. So if we uh Hook just on top it, lovely. Lovely F1 like that. A few more of them. Be on your way to a decent weight. An alternative way of starting your match is actually feeding bait short. Now, normally you use fish pellets with this, and if it was a little bit warm, and this is how I would have started the session, but with it being so cold, I didn't really start. But we'll, we'll have a look now and see if I can catch you one for the camera. Quickly run through the rig, same elastic as the, the Dobbin rig, the green, dark green hollow, perfect. Got a small soft feed, feed pot on the end there. Got an FM5 float in a 0.6, nice wire stem just so it holds in any wind, just it aids presentation. The main line is 016, loaded mono. We've got a sprung bolt of number nines, and then we've got a 6 inch hook length of 010 to an, an 0814 hook in a size 18. So just quickly have a look and see if we can catch one. Bait couldn't be any simpler, just form an expander and some micro pellets. <laughs> and just ship out to where we're going to fish. Some pellets in, in line with your far back marker, lift your rig out and lower it in. Like just to hold hold the rig out just so it all straightens up. Just in amongst the loose feed and then slowly drop it in. And some days, like like I say, when it's warmer, you can have a really good start on this. catch up to 30, 25, 30 pounds in the first hour, which at this time of year is brilliant. So we'll just see if we can catch one here. 
with it being so cold they don't really expect us to catch one very quickly but still we'll have a look don't need to feed too much to start with just 20 20 or so micro pellets just every now and then lift your rig out a little bit and drop it back in just that little bit of movement sometimes induces the fish to take it to take the bait a little bit of an indication there then lifting and dropping Let's see if we can get one here Lift the rig out and drop it back in. There we go. Take your time. Every fish is semi accounts. I think it's a small skim. No, nope. small F1. There we go, lovely. So, there's an alternative way. Oh, there's an alternative way of starting your peg.